Amen. Well, uh, our subject tonight is the second coming. Oh. So we are going to continue our Unlocking Revelation seminar and uh, studying prophecy. Mm. And isn't it isn't it neat that God has told us beforehand oh, what is going to happen? Amen. Amen. You know? amen. And we yeah. can look through all the prophecies that we have seen so far and saw God predicted it, it happened. God predicted it, it happened. God predicted it over and over and over. So we know when he says he will come again, he, he will, will come again. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So the question is, uh, what does the Bible say about the second coming? And is there some confusion on the subject? And I think there, as most subjects in the Bible, there is confusion on this subject in the world today. We should not be surprised at that. Did the Jews... <laughs> That's good. They did for God. <laughs> um... Did the Jews understand the first coming of Christ? No. 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 By and large, no. They did not understand. What were they expecting? A, 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 a conqueror. A conquering a king. king. And you could say they were expecting a lion, and yep. they got a lamb, right? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and because of that, they did not accept him. Hmm. We should use that as a precautionary tale for the church, because are we any better? Right? God's people in those days, the Jewish nation even though they had the scriptures, misunderstood them. And why did they misunderstand that? Why do you think it was easy for them to believe that a conquering king was coming instead of a suffering To free them from the Romans. Absolutely. It was something they wanted to hear. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. It's always easier to trick people with something that they want to hear, right? Mm -hmm. And the idea of this Messiah who came, who looked poor, who talked about... You know, this kingdom that's not on this earth and that was going to suffer and not give them victory over the Romans and they were going to have to stay under this bondage. That didn't sound very pleasing. So they were very, very happy and willing to accept a lie because it sounded better. I think a very similar thing is happening in the Christian church today because we're no better than the Jews in those days. Uh, we have the scriptures, but we are just as likely to be deceived. In fact, Paul tells us in the last days, expect people to be deceived, right? So, let's look at the subject of the second coming, and we will clear up some common misconceptions. The second coming is the keynote of Scripture. It is like the most important prophecy in all of Scripture. Put it to you this way, here's some stats. Over 1,500 prophecies about the second coming in the Old Testament. 1,500 of those prophecy, uh, prophecies. Prophecy. <laughs> He's so cute. <laughs> yes. For every prophecy of the first coming of Jesus, there are eight about the second coming in the Old Testament. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. So, for eight times as many about the second coming as there is about the first coming. Now, the first coming was very important, right? But the Bible talks about the second coming eight times more. So that shows you God really wants us to know this is important, right? It is mentioned, on average, every 25 verses in the New Testament. On average, every 25 verses, second coming, second coming, right? So it's important to focus on that. Now, here is probably the most beautiful promise in the New Testament, I think, and it's one on the second coming. John chapter 14, verse 1 through 3, you can follow along with me. It says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Mm -hmm. So Jesus promises he is going, but he will come again for us. And he's only going to do what? Prepare a place, place for us. Exactly. That's what he's doing for us now. Okay. Now, let's talk about some popular theories. Anyone ever heard of the Left Behind series, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Of course, we've probably all heard of it. They've made two movies on this now. Just in, in the last few years, what, 10 years? When was the first one made? Is that early 2000s, late yeah, 90s? 90, something like that. And they've already got a second one. That tells you that the movie must have done good. Hollywood doesn't usually make movies like this unless... Uh, Unless they think it's going to sell. 
And so they made, they remade the movie twice, and this is the most recent version. And they got a big name star as their lead, uh, Nicolas Cage. And you'll notice the, the, the title there, under Left Behind, you see the, um, the, uh, the subtitle there? The End Begins. The End Begins, right? The End Begins. So this is the popular view of the Second Coming. If you were to look and, and ask most Christians about the, the Second Coming, this is a very, very popular view. Now, here's a question for you. Would the devil try to trick us on this subject? Of course. Did he try to trick the Jews? Yeah. Absolutely, he did. So why would he not try to trick us, right? So here's what the secret rapture teaches. This is the, the basic idea behind the Left Behind series is the secret rapture. And this is basically what it says. This is, this, I'm not saying this is true, I'm just saying this is what they say, right? It says that the church, or the, the faithful Christians, are going to disappear like a, you heard the idea of a thief in the night, right? Mm -hmm. Jesus will come like a thief, and they'll all disappear. That's the concept behind the title, Left Behind, is that all of a sudden there will be people who are driving, or even flying planes, or doing whatever, and they're in the office, and all of a sudden, poof, they're gone. Mm -hmm. And their clothes are on the floor. And they have that, those scenes a lot in the movie, where you'll have clothes on the floor, because the person inside disappeared. So like, why are they, are they then naked if they go to heaven? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Okay, maybe they get celestial robes or something. Like that. That's a good question. Good question. Thank you, Matthew, for opening that up to us. <laughs> we don't know. We're going to be in idea. spirit. <laughs> so that's the idea, is that they all, poof, they're gone. And then... Everyone else is left behind, right? Oh, yeah. So the church disappears, but as soon as the church disappears, the end begins. Mm -hmm. And then you see behind them all this mayhem and destruction, and there's this great time of the great tribulation. And the Antichrist shows up, and depending on what your belief is, there's various versions of this. Some say there's going to be a three and a half year tribulation, some say a seven year tribulation. Uh, basically, it's going to be bad. Like, Hello, please go down. Nice to see you. Oh, they're open. They're open. So, there's after the church disappears, according to this theory, then there's great tribulation all over all over the world. That's the basic idea. Now, you guys have heard this, right? Mm -hmm. Left behind the secret rapture theory. That's basically how it works. So, what we want to see tonight is is that biblical. Is this idea of a secret rapture and then a great tribulation coming, is that biblical? Now, first of all, you should be thinking already. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Sorry. That's okay. Sorry. It's no problem. I'm laughing. This attitude. I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> you should already be thinking about this concept of the great tribulation. Because haven't we learned about the Great Tribulation? Yes. Mm -hmm. And when did that happen? That was during the Dark Age. That was the Dark 1260. Age, right? The 1,260 years of papal supremacy where the church was persecuted. That is a Great Tribulation. Yes. Over a thousand years, right? Mm -hmm. Now, it's true that a time of trouble is coming in the future, but the Great Tribulation has already happened. It's already yeah. happened. And that's the confusion, right? But a time of trouble is coming, so there's some truth to this idea that's going to be bad in the end. Well, let's clear it up. Let's see what the Bible says on this. Okay. So we know Jesus is coming. The question is, how will he come? How will he come? Second coming of Christ. Revelation chapter 1, verse 7. Behold, he is coming with clouds, and some people will see him. Is that what it says? No. Yeah. No. It says, and every eye will see him. Amen. Interesting, right? Yep. Every eye will see him. Now, you may be asking the question, the planet is round <coughs> like a globe. How could everyone see him at the same time, right? I don't know exactly how this is going to work, but we, we are given a hint here. So how will every eye see him? In Matthew 24, 27, it kind of gives us a hint here. It says, for as the lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. 
So it seems that he comes, and over and over again, when you read in the Bible, it describes Jesus coming from the east. Mm -hmm. And it seems as if he comes from a certain direction and goes, like lightning travels around. So maybe he'll make a sweep around the planet. I'm not, I'm not sure exactly how that works. But that kind of gives us a hint that you can see things from a distance and they'll come uh, from that direction. So that's the idea. But some, one way or another, Revelation is clear. Every eye will see him. Right? Okay, next question. So it's not secret. So that doesn't sound secret, right? Mm -hmm. If everyone sees it, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, next question. Will it be audible? Will you be able to hear it? Well, yes. yes. 1 Thessalonians Come. chapter 4, verse 16 and 17. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a what's that? Shout. shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of God. Now, if you were living in those days, and you wanted to describe something that was loud, you wouldn't say, you know, a subwoofer, or something like that, you know? Uh, so, you know, a, a loud jet airplane engine or something, right? If you wanted to describe loud things in those days, you would use words like shout and trumpets. Those are like the loudest things you had back then, right? Or you could describe thunder and lightning like we saw in previous verses, right? So the Bible is trying to give us an idea that this is going to be a loud event. You see that? Shouts and trumpets. The Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we which are alive and remain will be caught up together in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we always be with the Lord. Now we'll come back to that verse in a second, but the idea I want you to see here is that it's loud. Okay? Next one. 1 First, uh, First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51 and 53. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. We've studied this idea before, right? That death is a sleep. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Mm -hmm. Now, why is that? Because when Jesus comes at the end of time, there will be people who are still alive, mm -hmm. right? Yes. There will be Christians who are still alive, and so they will never die, mm -hmm. right? Right? Yeah. Isn't that beautiful, that idea? Mm -hmm. We could possibly, if, you know, we don't know when the Lord's coming, but if it's soon, we could possibly be among those who never taste death. Mm -hmm. Wow. That is beautiful. That's mm -hmm. beautiful. <laughs> so we shall not all sleep, but we will all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. Again, we see this idea of audible, right? For the trumpet will sound... And the dead will be raised, incorruptible, and we shall be changed. So we, meaning the ones who are alive at the end, will be changed. So the dead will be raised from the dead, and those who didn't die, who are still alive, will be changed and given immortal bodies. Yeah. And then it says, this mortal must put on immortality. That's the idea. Do you have a point? In Matthew 16, 28, it says, Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in this kingdom. Well, that's a, a complicated verse. I'm not sure what you wrote that out. <laughs> 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 uh, well, the, I, I, I connected it to that one. But. It's uh, the idea when you read that passage, immediately after that, where is it? Matthew what? Yes, uh, 16 to 28. Matthew 16, 28? Yeah. Matthew 16, 28. Surely I say to you, there are some standing here who shall not see death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Well, who were there at that time, right? Well, that was the Jews. It was the, those at that time. Yeah. So a lot of people read this, and they get confused on this verse, right? They say, well, that means Jesus should have come a long time ago, because who are those people? The next verse... Remember, there's no chapter divisions in the, in, in the Bible originally. The next verse is Matthew 17, verse 1. Yes. Now, after six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother, up on a high mountain by themselves. Mm -hmm. And you had the story of the transfiguration. Mm -hmm. And in the transfiguration, what happened? G um, Jesus was transfigured and glow, glowed like the sun, right? His face was like the sun, white raiment, right? There was clouds all around him. 
And who was with him? Elijah. Elijah. Moses Elijah. and Elijah. Elijah. What happened to Elijah? Did he ever die? No. 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 He never tasted death. He went straight to heaven, right? What about Moses? No. Did Moses die? He yes, yes, he did. Oh. Yeah, he did. Remember that? Sure. God told him, go, and go up on the top of the mountain and lie down and die, right? Yes. And he walked up and he laid down and died and he was, he was still strong. You know, isn't that isn't that a cool, that's a great way to die though, right? Yes. It, because it better than slowly. Like he it says he his eyes were still bright and his he was strong enough to climb a mountain, right? And I believe the reason why God did this is because they probably would have made his body into some kind of shrine. Mm -hmm. we were just talking about that at Pollock today that people, you know, the story of Peter's body that they think they found oh, Peter yes. and, and people make, they worship these things. So God says, go up onto this mountain. Where no one can see, lie down over here, and die. And then in the Bible it does say, in, in uh, I believe it's in Jude and in the Old Testament as well, it talks about the devil disputing over the body of Moses. Mm -hmm. So apparently Moses was resurrected at some point, and he's in heaven because he came and he appeared with Jesus. Mm -hmm. So now you see two people, one who never died, Elijah, and one who was resurrected. These two symbolize the two groups of people who will be saved at the end. Amen. Moses yes. and Elijah symbolize, they symbolize those who will never taste death, Elijah, and those who will be raised from the death of Moses. Mm -hmm. And so, in a microcosm, and then Jesus showing up glowing like the sun, that's what it's mm -hmm. going to look like at the second coming. In a microcosm, this was a micro picture of the, the second coming. Mm -hmm. And who, get, who got to see it? Peter, John, James, Peter, and James. And James. Peter, James, and John. They got to see it. So there were some who saw Jesus coming in his kingdom in a microcosm way. It didn't mean that the second coming was going to happen then. But yeah. you got to think of it this way. If we say, for example, the USA is at war in Afghanistan today. We'll say that, right? Use those terms. Does that mean every man, woman, and child in the USA is no. in Afghanistan? No. 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 It means that there are representatives of the country there, right? Mm -hmm. We have a presence there, right? That's mm -hmm. the idea. Mm -hmm. In the same way, Jesus' kingdom was right there in front, of, um, in front of James, Peter, and John. He's glowing like the sun, transfigured, and he's got the resurrected saint and a, um, um, and a um, uh, saint who never tasted death. Mm -hmm. so that that, that kind of answers that idea. I get the concept of you know, that there are going to be people who never die, but people confuse that particular verse. Anyway, okay, sorry. We'll, we'll, we'll keep on from there. So, at the end, there will be a, a great trumpet, and those uh, who are died in Christ and the Lord, they will be raised from the dead, and those who, uh, who are alive and remain that are Christians will be changed, because this mortal must put on immortality. But the idea is that it will be audible. We will all hear it. There will be trumpets. Okay. Who will be with him when he returns? All the saints. <clears throat> Matthew 25, verse 31. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the oh, holy angels. angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. Now, how many angels is that? Million. 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 <laughs> Million. A lot. Apparently in Daniel it talks about ten thousands times ten thousands and thousands of thousands, yes. right? We don't we, we really don't know, but it's you know, we're talking millions and millions, right? A lot of angels. Now, think of when Jesus resurrected from the dead, right? It says that what was it, two angels came and the Romans and the Romans who were the guards who were protecting the, the, the uh, grave, they fell like dead men when they saw an angel of the Lord. Oh man. And that's just a couple angels, right? Imagine now if millions of angels. How oh, shall sure. oh. wow. you imagine that? Just lighting up the sky with their glory, right? Awesome. And their glory can't even withstand the is, is nothing compared to the one in the center to Christ and his glory, right? So the, we were talking a very visual, audible <laughs> major event here. This is not something that, oh, did you hear Jesus came last night? No. <laughs> I tell you, right? And in fact, when Jesus says, if any, the people will come in the last days and they will say, I am Christ, right? And he says, if any man says to you, he's over here or he's over there, don't go. The reason, you know the reason why? 
Because no one is going to have to tell you. That's right. Yes. No right. one's going to have to tell you. you. If they know. have to tell you, it's a counterfeit. Yep. That's right. Amen. And believe you Amen. me, the devil will try to counterfeit this situation. So, remember that verse. If somebody, hey, did you hear Jesus came? No. Because <laughs> if, if I have to hear about it, it's not him. That's the Bible right. says mm -hmm. every eye will see him. Amen. Right? Have the, have the dead all raised from the graves? No. no. That's not Jesus. Mm -hmm. Right? So, let's go on. By the way, go ahead. there are over 7 billion people <clears throat> on earth, and we have one guardian angel each person. So at least there are 7 so. billion or more. I believe, I believe so. I think you're right. Um, yeah, I think you're right. That's a lot of angels. <laughs> <laughs> what else will happen on that day? Okay, this is interesting. For it is my Father's will that all who see His Son and believe in His name should have eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. Now, we've seen this already in Thessalonians, but I wanted to, to draw this point out, that the dead in Christ are going to be raised from the dead that day. So here's an here's a artist's depiction of the graves opening up. Can you imagine the, 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 the shouts of glory and victory from saints who are raised from the dead on that day. I, this, is, this is not a type of event that you, oh, okay, the world just kind of keeps going. This is, yeah. I mean, You're the done. graves are opened up and people are raised from the dead. Mm -hmm. Here we see again, 1 Corinthians 15, 52 and 53, the dead will be raised on that day. The trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised. So, you know what's funny? When you watch those Left Behind movies, and they, they have this idea of, of, of the, uh, the people just disappear, right, at the secret rapture. Mm -hmm. They never put this part in of the graves opening up and people coming up out of the graves. But apparently that happens at the same time Jesus comes. Why don't they show that? Mm -hmm. Because it doesn't fit into that theory. It just doesn't work. So the dead will be raised. All right, now let's summarize so far. So far we see there's going to be trumpets. There's going to be shouts, the voice of the archangel, the dead are raised, and every eye see him. Now, does that sound like a secret to you? No. No, it doesn't. It does not sound like a secret to me. Okay. What will the wicked do? What will happen to the wicked? We've talked about what happened to the righteous dead and the righteous living. What happened to the wicked? I thought this was kind of a funny picture here. Uh, this guy trying to, he looks like he's trying to hide under a rock, maybe. <laughs> Revelation chapter 6, verse 15 through 17. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, the commanders, the mighty men, every slave and every free man, hid themselves in the caves and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. Mm. For the great day of his wrath has come, and who will be able to stand? That's such a, you know, there's something sublime about that sentence, but it's also sad. The wrath of the Lamb, right? Mm -hmm. It almost sounds like an oxymoron. I mean, have you guys ever mm -hmm. seen a lamb? You ever, you know, pet a lamb? Right? You don't think of the wrath of the Lamb, right? Because they're so sweet, they're so gentle. And really, we should all... Uh, if you, if you accept the, the sacrifice of the Lamb, then you have no reason to fear the wrath, right? Mm -hmm. And so the sad thing is, is that those who reject Christ are going to be afraid of He who is willing to die for them, the Lamb. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's kind of this strange phrase of the wrath of the Lamb, right? Mm -hmm. But they're afraid, and they try to do something ridiculous. They try to hide from God. And it, it, it's, it's kind of ridiculous. So that's why I picked this photo here of this guy trying to hide under a rock as, as if he could hide from God. Uh, hello, sir. Hey, no, you're fine, you're fine. Please join us. Yeah, just come sit there. It's actually, Joshua, uh, even more ridiculous is talking to rocks. Talking to rocks, right? <laughs> Please, rocks. <laughs> yeah. 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 And said to the mountains yes. and rocks. Desperate like, times call for desperate measures, I guess. Yeah. So the wicked try to hide at the second coming. Okay? What else happens? Malachi 4, verse 1. For behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven, and all the proud, yes, all who do wickedly, will be stubble. 
And the day which is coming shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts, that will leave them neither root nor branch. Do you guys know that? That the wicked are des destroyed at the second coming by fire? Mm -hmm. That's consistently spoken of uh, in the Bible. And here's a, artist, no. well, here's a uh, picture here of a, a field there, and it looks pretty dry. And you know when, when uh, fire catches on stubble, <coughs> it's does pretty easy work, mm -hmm. right? That's the idea. The wicked are compared to stuff in that day, and the fire burns them up. Second Thessalonians chapter two verse eight. Now this is speaking of the Antichrist here, and it says this, uh, and the lawless one. In context, when you read the context of the chapter, it's speaking of the Antichrist. Then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. Wow. So he will be destroyed with the brightness of the coming of the Lord. So that is speaking of the Antichrist, being destroyed at the end. Okay? Matthew 16, 27. For the Son of Man will come in his glory, in the, in the glory of his Father, with his angels, and then he will reward each according to his works. So, at the second coming... Each are rewarded, are rewarded according to their works. So the righteous dead are raised from the dead, given new bodies. The righteous living are changed and caught up in the clouds to meet him. So they get their reward. And then the wicked are rewarded according to their works as well, and they are destroyed. So everyone gets their reward at the second coming, right? Okay. And then we have this. Now, I think this is a very, um, very clear description of what will happen at the end. It's told in a parable. Go, go with me to Matthew chapter 13, and we'll look at the parable of the wheat and the tares, is what it's usually called. I don't call it the wheat and the weeds, because people say, what's a tare? Well, it's just a weed. Uh, Matthew chapter 13, verse 24 through 30, that's the whole parable, and we won't read the whole thing. But you guys, I'm sure you're familiar with the, with the story. What happens is, um, Jesus says the kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. <laughs> it's okay. It'll help. It reads the verse for me. So, the kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. And basically, what happens is, the, the workers go to sleep. And an enemy comes and sows weeds in that same field. And when they wake up and, and things start to, to grow, you see that there's wheat growing, but there's also weeds, tares. And start looking in verse 28. Uh, the um, servant said to him, um, an enemy has done this. An enemy sowed the bad seed, right? The servant said to him, Do you want us then to go and gather them up? Go pull the weeds out, right? Mm -hmm. Verse 29, But he said, No, lest while you gather up the tares, or, or weeds, it's just another word for weeds, you also uproot the wheat with them. Right? Let both grow together until the harvest. Mm -hmm. And at the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, First, Gather together the tares and bind them in bundles to burn, but gather the wheat into my barn. Now, what's the order of events there? What happens? Who gets their reward first? The wicked or the righteous? The wicked. Like the wicked. The wicked. Mm -hmm. Did you see that? That's right. Yeah. The wicked gather the, them up in, in first mm -hmm. and burn them and gather the wheat into my barn. Mm -hmm. So first the wicked get gathered up and burned. Now, that is the exact opposite of what the Left Behind series teaches. It teaches that first, the righteous get taken, and the wicked are left, and they are killed later at some point. But according to this parable, who gets, who gets their reward first? The wicked do. Yeah, the wicked. He says again, look, verse 30, Let both grow together unto the harvest, and at the har time of the harvest I will say to the reapers, First gather together the tares, that's the weeds, and bind them in bundles to burn them but gather the, the wheat into my barn. Okay, so the wicked get their punishment first. But they both get, it's, it's at the same time, but if you want to, you know, nitpick on it, really the wicked are destroyed first. 
That's the idea. But it all happens at the same event. That's the point. Okay, now, here's the explanation. Matthew 13, 36 through 43. This is one of the few parables that Jesus explains. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house. And his disciples came to him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the tares of the field. He answered and said to them, He who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world. The good seeds are the sons of the kingdom. But the tares are the sons of the wicked one. Fairly simple, right? Mm -hmm. And do we have to guess what this means? No. Mm -hmm. this, is the, this is the exact same pattern that Jesus uses in, in Revelation. Is He gives a symbol and then he explains it. That's the idea. So pretty simple. The... Uh, good seed, he who sows the good seed is the son of man, the field is the world, the good seeds are the sons of the kingdom, and the tares are the sons of the wicked one. The enemy who sowed them, meaning the weeds, is the devil. The harvest is the end, the end of the age, the end of the world, right? And the reapers are the angels. They come and gather the, the wheat together. Therefore, as the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of this age. <coughs> The Son of Man will send out His angels, and they will gather out of His kingdom all things that offend, and those who practice lawlessness. And will gather them into the furnace of fire, they will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine forth as the sun in, in the kingdom of their Father. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. <coughs> Fairly simple, straightforward, told the order of events. We see it's clear when this is going to happen, right? So this idea that God's people are, are taken away and they just, they're not even around during the final stuff and then the wicked are kind of dealt with, this, uh, this isn't, it doesn't fit the description at all. What we see is that first, the wicked are killed. It all happens at the same time at the end of the world, but if you want to talk, if you want to get dicey about it, the wicked are killed first as soon as Jesus comes and the righteous are caught up together with him. You guys see the idea? Mm -hmm. Okay. So again, so far, we see that there's trumpets, there's shouts, there's voice of the archangel, the dead are raised, every eye see him, and all the wicked are killed. At the second coming. All the wicked are killed. So, how, how does that happen so fast, or what are we doing, or, I mean, is it <laughs> Well, I mean, it says that twenty it, nine. Boom. So quick. It, yeah. Well, it says that they're. Think of it this way: um, the wicked are, are alive because God allows them to be right. Right. When He reveals Himself in His glory, really? and He removes His protection from them, they're instantly burned up. Oh, yes. So when he comes, it says they'll be destroyed by the brightness of his coming. Yes. So just him showing up, the brightness of it, you can imagine just, yeah. they just go into flames in front of him. You know? and, but the righteous are all protected from him. And they are all caught up into the air with him. Amen. Amazing, right? Yes. They so that's basically how it's going. Does that, that make sense? Like yeah. They're fireproof. <laughs> yeah, the righteous are fireproof. You, you can the imagine the wicked. Fireproof. You can imagine the wicked being. I mean, really, really, yeah. The yeah. Bible says our God is a consuming fire, and yeah. we're going to live with Him for eternity. So He makes us fireproof, I guess, in some yeah. way, right? Yeah. But the wicked, you can imagine. You know, you've seen videos of like nuclear blasts where it's just everything is just burnt up like that. And you know. Yeah. So no one will be They're destroyed him. by the brightness of his coming. When Jesus comes, everybody's dead. That's a good point. You think about that, right? So if the if the the dead who are Christians, believers, are raised and they're taken with the Lord, the righteous who are believers are caught up into the clouds with him, taken with the Lord to heaven, right? And then if all the wicked are killed, then who is left on the earth? Nobody. 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 This earth is empty. And we're gonna we'll talk about that more when we talk about the millennium, but that gives you an idea of, of the idea. There's nobody left on this planet. Well actually, there would be a, a some. You guys use your creative imagination here. There are some beings left. The demons. The demons. The demons. That's it. Mm -hmm. The angels are going with us, right? Yeah. The only thing left on this destroyed planet mm -hmm. is demons. And a bunch of dead bodies. That is their bottom 
Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. We'll talk about that more when we talk about the millennium, but, but that's, that's very interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. That does not sound like the world goes on like normal, <clears throat> or at least the world goes on in some chaotic state, because everyone's either dead or gone. Yeah. Right? So this idea that, you know, oh, when, when people disappear, then you're going to have this time period where the world goes on, but it's chaotic. No. The, all the wicked are killed, and all the righteous are gone. It's, it's the end. The, the world's over. It's over, right? It's not this idea. They, they, the Left Behind series gives you this idea that the world continues for some time after the righteous are taken away. And we just don't see that in the Bible. It's just not there. Okay. Now, where did they get this idea of the secret rapture, right? Because they must have some verses that they use, because it doesn't seem anywhere close to what we've seen so far, right? The description we've seen in the Bible does not seem to fit this Left Behind series, so where did they get this idea from? There's a few verses, and we're going to look at their best verses now. The first one is this idea of the thief in the night, right? You guys have heard of this concept. Oh, yes. Well, the Lord is going to come like a thief in the night, and he's just going to steal his people away while the devil's not looking, and we're all just going to disappear. That's the idea, right? Let's look at 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9 through 12, and we will see Peter use this phrase, a thief in the night, and see what he says about it. Starting in verse 9. You can follow along with me here. 2 Peter chapter 3, starting in verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So does God want everyone to repent? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Our, our, Cal our Calvinist brethren should, should read that verse carefully because it doesn't fit the idea that he only wants a certain people to be saved. It says he wants everyone to be saved. Amen. But most refuse. Okay, so the Lord's coming, but he's long-suffering towards us because he doesn't want anyone to perish, right? Mm -hmm. Verse 10, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. And you can stop right there and say, there you go, Joshua. Thief in the night. He comes and steals us away. Yeah, keep reading. <laughs> keep That's reading. Right. Yeah. The day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. Bless, Bless you. In the which the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. Does that sound like the world's going to continue in no. some state after this mm -hmm. event happens? Yeah. No. No. The very atmosphere, the, the, the heavens, it says, that's the atmosphere, is going to be burned up. The elements themselves will melt with fervent heat. Mm. Uh, we have really messed this planet up yeah. in yes. some ways, right? Yeah. You, has anyone ever been to Mexico City? Or mm. All you got to do is go to Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And you know that the atmosphere has been pretty messed up. Right? You've seen the pictures of smog in China, mm -hmm. you know, and it's so thick, people are walking around with masks, right? And we put, you know, nuclear waste and all this pollution and all this stuff. The earth needs to be cleansed. And when Jesus returns, he burns the wicked up. But it says that the elements and the atmosphere itself will be burned up. And so he cleanses this world by fire. Interesting, right? Go ahead. Yeah, in verse 11, it says, Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, yes. what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness? Absolutely. It means it'll be dissolved. There'll be nothing left. There's nothing left. And he uses that as a warning, saying if, if all the wickedness is going to be burned up, we should be acting, he said, in the holy conduct, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's that's kind of a, it's a, you know, all the wickedness is going to be burned up, so let him separate the wickedness from you now. That's the idea. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the, it's going to be dissolved. The atmosphere is dissolved, the elements not with burning heat, and that happens, according to verse 10, on the day of the Lord when he comes as a thief in the night. So the idea of a thief in the night is not the idea that he comes you know, this picture that they presented, that he comes and he steals us away, and everyone, oh, what happened? They all, all Christians disappeared. No, the idea of the thief in the night is that when a thief comes, it's, you, it's unexpected. It's yes. a surprise. That's the idea. It's not announced beforehand. And, but, 
when the thief comes, if he takes everything and kills every everyone there who doesn't come with him, then it's it's not like oh what happened you know it's it's over right mm -hmm. that's the idea. So the thief in the night is simply used as a metaphor to, to let you know it's a surprise. Mm -hmm. It's a surprise, right? But that day the elements melt with fervent heat, the atmosphere, the heavens is burned up. The earth doesn't continue. I'm sorry. The earth cannot continue if the very atmosphere is destroyed and the elements are burned. So here we see this thief in the night verse, and it just doesn't fit this concept at all. It doesn't fit at all. And so what you have is people taking a piece of a verse and spinning this theory out of it and just not reading, unfortunately not reading their Bible enough and being tricked by people who are have also been deceived. Now, they might be good I'm sure there's a lot of good people. You know, we've looked at other concepts before, people misunderstanding uh, topics, and you could be a good person and misunderstand this topic. You could be a Christian, you could be saved, and misunderstand this. But that's the purpose of studying this tonight, is so that we can help those people see this deception. Go ahead. Uh, does it also mean, if I may ask, is when he says, as a thief in the night, that we are not caught off guard, that we must be aware of how we stand we before be God. we got to be ready. If ready, that thing is, we, we got to be when ready it's now. Yeah. So you know, today is the day of salvation. Today, uh, today, today. Absolutely. There's no guarantees for tomorrow because we don't uh, know. Let's see is. here. Well, there's that verse that says, no one knows the hour or the day. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's in that. Yes. Yeah. I think it's in verse 14, right? Verse 14. Uh, let's see here. In the same chapter. Yeah, it talks about how you... you um, <clears throat> In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 4, it tells us that, um, it says, But you, brethren, are not in darkness, so that day should overtake you as a thief. Right. Right? Because we're, we're, you should be we're ready. not asleep. We're, exactly. yeah. we're awake. That's the idea. We're awaiting yeah. that day. Yes. Yep. Absolutely. Wait, no, is that what? It was 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, <clears throat> verse 4. And it's also, people nowadays think, Oh, you know, God's going to come whenever, like, hundreds of years like from way now. down the road. Yeah, so I'm just going to go on with my life. But you don't know the hour or the day. <coughs> Absolutely. Not even the angels know. Mm -hmm. That's why lots Absolutely. of times these false prophets pop up. Yep. And, you, and you say, well, how come they know? Do they think they're that special that they get a personal message from God? No. Like these people who think, Next Saturday, the world's gonna oh, end. Oh, the uh, September twenty third, yeah. Third with mm -hmm. the planet or the yeah. Let's planet. talk about that on September twenty fourth, and we will see once again. <laughs> <laughs> once again, folks are uh, they, get a little too happen. excited on uh, you know something that sounds interesting, sounds yeah. exciting. They have that article on Fox normal. News. They put it on Fox News. Uh, yeah, so you must be paying attention. I uh, is this there? Does it match Every few before? years, there's something like this, 36. right? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, we'll we'll see. It's not gonna happen. So What's that? The September. I didn't know that. Oh yeah, there's this theory that there's gonna be this new planet or this, some planet. Okay. Um, Let's yeah, talk about it next. The next it's, day. it's not even close. It's not even close. Okay. And they call it Planet X. Planet X. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We gotta pray for those folks. People are. Tricked easily. You gotta read your Bible more, and then you'll see. Like you said, when you heard this stuff and you knew Revelation twelve, and so you're like, no, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So here's the other verse that they often use for the secret secret rapture theory. You've heard of this concept of one shall be taken yes. and one shall be left, right? Mm -hmm. And that's the idea. Is, you know, there's a couple people working at the whatever. You know, a couple what cubicles. One guy is left, and the other guy disappears. That's right the idea. Right the meal. Yeah, right? Mm -hmm. So let's look at this. Matthew chapter 24. 40. Matthew 24. And let's look. This is one of their, their best verses that they use to try and establish this theory. And we are going to see it does not teach that at all. Matthew 24. Can somebody read for us verse 40 and 41? Then shall two be in the field. The one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the meal. The one shall be taken, and the other left. And they say, okay, there you go. One's going to disappear, the other one's going to stay here, right? 
back up for a second and read verse 39. Uh, actually, let's look at verse... Start in 37. 37 through 39. Can you, can you read that as well? Okay. 37 through 39. But as the days of Noah, Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Now, did you notice the key word in verse 39? Took. Took them away. The flood came, speaking of the days of Noah, and took them all away. And it's speaking of those who were lost, right? Right. Yes. The flood, they didn't know, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving, they didn't know what was going on until the flood came and took them all away. And then the next verse he says, two, women, two men will be in a field, one will be taken and the other left. What does it mean to be taken? The flood came and took them all away. One will be taken and the other left. Do you guys see the idea? They're misunderstanding what the it's word the take. It's the opposite. Those who are taken are the ones who are destroyed. <laughs> left means they are left unharmed. You guys see that? Mm -hmm. I mean, all you got to do is read the context. And it completely says the opposite. Until the flood came and took them all away. And then it says one, one man will be in the field, one will be taken, mm -hmm. and the other left. Meaning left alone. So the left behind Two, is the opposite. It's the opposite. Two women will be grinding a mill. One will be taken and the other left. Do you guys see the idea? Yeah. So They're destroyed. You want to be the ones left, meaning you're unharmed. That's the idea. The ones who are taken are destroyed. It's the opposite. It's the exact opposite. The devil often does that. He just do the exact opposite. All right, let's read a sister passage. You know, because the Gospels, they tell the same story multiple times. Luke chapter 17. Luke 17. And this is a, it's almost the identical passage. Jesus is telling the same idea. And he uses a slightly different word here, which makes it clear that those who are taken are destroyed. Uh, let's see, starting in verse 26, Luke 17. And as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be also in the days of the Son of Man. They ate, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and the flood came and in Matthew it says took them all away. Here it says the flood came and destroyed them all. So the parallel to took them all away is destroyed them all. You see that? It's Jesus telling the exact same story. In one place he says the flood came and took them all away. In the other, in, in Matthew it says that. In Luke it says the flood came and destroyed them all. So what happens to those who are taken away? They're destroyed. You guys see that? Mm -hmm. That's all you got to do is just read the context. And now, look, notice this. Look at verse 34 through 37. Okay, here's, the, here's this idea of one taken, one left, right? 34 through 37. I tell you, in that night there will be two men in one bed. One will be taken, and the other left. Two women will be grinding together, one will be taken, and the other left. Two men will be in the field, one will be taken, and the other left. And they answered and said to him, Where, Lord? Where are they taken? So he said to them, Wherever the body is, there will the vultures be gathered together. Mm. Mm. It's funny, so where are they taken? What you, go ahead. My translation says, Eagles. Oh, it's, yeah, it's the same idea. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But when we hear vultures, that, that kind yeah. of yeah. brings to mind what the idea is. It, where, where are they taken? Well, where the corpses are, that's where the vultures will be. Mm. So those who are taken are the ones who are destroyed. They're killed. Do you guys remember in Revelation 19, it tells the story of the marriage feast of the Lamb, and, it's, and, and it says, call together all the, 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 the birds to come eat the flesh of kings, right? And that's called the marriage feast of the Lamb because at the second coming, the wicked are destroyed and all their dead bodies are strewn all over the earth and the birds eat them. 
That's the idea. Those are the ones who are destroyed. Those are the ones who are taken. Where the vultures are, that's where the bodies will be. Mm -hmm. So it's the exact opposite of what the behind series teaches. Mm -hmm. They will actually be killed at the second coming. So you do not want to be the ones who are taken. You want to be the ones who are left unharmed. Mm -hmm. That's the idea. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, mm -hmm. Taken equals destroyed. If you just compare Matthew 24 mm -hmm. with Luke 17, exact same story. One says the flood came and took them all away. The next one says the flood came and destroyed them all. So taken equals destroyed. destroyed. Okay. But if you go to somebody who doesn't read the context, you just take that one verse by itself and say, yep. see, it's taken. And then you build this whole fanciful theory about, oh yeah, they're taken up to heaven and they disappear. And, and guess what? Here's one of the main reasons why people believe this. Let me tell you. Remember, we looked at um, the idea of the Jews and how they were deceived? And they were deceived because the idea of a conquering Messiah was something that they wanted to hear, right? Mm -hmm. Now, you go to Christians and you tell them, yeah, there's going to be a really bad time coming soon, great tribulation, but if you're a good Christian... You won't have to go through it. You'll just disappear. Mm. And you don't have to worry about that at all. In fact, you don't even need to study. I, uh, sometimes I've tried to study prophecy and show people the idea of the Antichrist. I don't want to hear that. I don't need to know that. I'm not going to be here. Yeah. Right? And so it tells people something that they want to hear. I don't have to go through the tribulation. It sounds appealing. And so people want to believe it. It sounds like, that sounds great. I get to just disappear, and I'm up in heaven while all this stuff is going crazy on the earth, and oh man, I'm glad I'm not there anymore, right? It sounds like something people want to hear. Unfortunately, the truth is, well, the, the truth is, is more beautiful, but people are going to be uh, deceived by this because they, they believe in something they want to hear. But Paul says in Acts that we must go through tribulation to enter the kingdom of God, right? The idea that they say is, oh, well, the seven last plagues come. We're not even there for them. But what is, what, the seven last plagues is a, it's like a repeat of the Exodus, right? Mm -hmm. What happened to the children of Israel? Did God take them out of Egypt first and then drop a bunch of plagues on uh -huh. Egypt? No. Uh -huh. He dropped the plagues while they were still in Egypt, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. But the plagues didn't hurt them. Mm -hmm. Right? Psalm 91, a thousand will fall on your right side and ten thousand on your left, mm -hmm. but the plague will not come nigh you. Yeah. That's the idea. We will go through the tribulation. It will be a time of trouble. Well, the time of trouble, it's different than tribulation. But the idea is we're going to go through this horrible time. We're going to have to go through it, but don't worry, God will protect us. Mm -hmm. That's the idea. So just as the children of Israel, they saw all ten plagues, and it wasn't until the last plague that they were delivered in. And, and taken out of Egypt in the same way we will see the, ten, the seven last plagues. We will see all this time of trouble. But it won't harm us. But we're going to have to go through it. This popular theory tells people something that they want to hear. You're not even going to have to worry about it. It sugarcoats it. It sugarcoats it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay? Last verse on this idea of what they use. You know that the word... Okay, so it says the secret rapture, right? That's the name of the theory. Do you know that the word secret rapture is nowhere in the Bible, right? Mm -hmm. You don't find that phrase anywhere in the Bible. So where does it come from? The word rapture, it comes from a Latin word that you should already be thinking Latin, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Which church was uh, teaching in Latin? Rome. <laughs> you, should Rome. Already, Rome. you should already be thinking interesting, <coughs> right? Yep. Rapture comes from a Latin word which means to be caught up. And it's from the Latin translation of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16. So let's look at that again, and we'll see where they get this idea of being caught up. And the crazy thing is, you know, we, uh, Colleen and I, we went to um, uh, Blockbuster when they were, they were uh, closing it down. Remember that? You know, all the Blockbusters are all closed now. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we went to the, the, the Blockbuster when they were they were having their fire sale, getting rid of everything, you know, because Netflix and, and everything destroyed all the Blockbusters. Red they were selling all their stuff for, uh, yeah, and Redbox. Red yeah. yeah. And they were um, selling, you know, movies for a dollar and stuff. And we go in there and we see what's in there. And they had 
the old Left Behind series in there. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> they had the old movies of it, the Kirk Cameron ones. Yeah. And I think we got it for a buck, right? Yeah. And I was like, well, this is interesting <laughs> research. I hadn't watched it. You know, I want to see what, it, you know, watch the actual movie. And I remember watching it, and they quote this verse, you know, and they see, see here it is. We're going to be caught up together. And I was just astonished that they quoted the whole verse and ignored half of what it said. So let's, let's look at this. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 and 17. They actually quote this in the, in the movie. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with the voice of the archangel, or with the shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. They quote that. What? And just ignore it. They ignore what it said. What happens first? The dead in yeah. Christ rise. Mm -hmm. They don't depict that at all because it doesn't fit, right? But they just quote it and just pass it as if it doesn't, even, doesn't matter. And then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up. That's the word, caught up. And if you were to use the Latin version, Latin Vulgate, it would, it would, it's, it's like raptura or something like that. Caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall ever be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Wow. So, Amen. what happens Amen. first before those who are alive are caught up? The dead. The dead, the dead are raised. But you watch those movies, and there's no graves opening. They don't show any of that. They don't show mass graves all over the world. And every righteous person who has ever lived being raised from the dead, they don't show that because it doesn't fit the theory. But they quote it and just ignore that part. It's uh, To me, it's... Uh, I was just like, how do you not see that? Your, your storyline doesn't fit. The dead raise the car rise first. So hopefully that, that, this becomes very clear, that it doesn't fit at all. These are the main verses that we've gone through, and those verses themselves don't fit this theory. It's not going to be a secret other than the fact that we don't know when it's happening, until it happens. And then it's not a secret at all. Everyone will see, we will hear, the, raise, the graves will be opened. The wicked will all be killed. It will be the end of the world. Nothing's going to go on. There's not going to be some, some tribulation after that because it's over when Jesus comes. Now, why did they make up this deception? We're kind of, we'll kind of close with this thought. Why did they make this up? Well, we looked at what this basic idea, the basic outline of this theory is. And when you look at it, one thing that you'll notice is that the Antichrist does not come until after the secret rapture. So that puts the Antichrist in the future. Mm -hmm. And not already here. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. So, if you are Rome, and the Protestant Reformation has fingered you as the Antichrist, you've got to come up with a theory that points people to look for the Antichrist somewhere else. You see that? Mm -hmm. And so the Left Behind Theory, we've gone over this on, on previous nights, but it's literally based off of Jesuit writings. There was a, a Jesuit priest uh, who came out with a, a, a book on Revelation, and he proposed this idea that the Antichrist is all in the future. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about it, it's all in the future. Alcazar, okay, right? Uh, which one? Alcazar okay, or Rivera? I think it was Rivera. Rivera. I think it was Rivera. Yeah, Rivera. that might have been another guy who influenced him. One's from the past, the one's from the future. Yeah, there's preterism and yeah. futurism. Yeah. And futurism's the, the popular one that's today. It, that's yeah. It. And so a Jesuit priest made up with this <coughs> came up with this idea after the Reformation and specifically for the purpose to get the heat off of the papacy and make people think the Antichrist is in the future. That's it's very exciting movies and it's interesting and planes are crashing. But while they're watching this exciting film, they're getting implanted in their mind, the Antichrist is in the future. Mm -hmm. And so when I've had so many, I can't tell you how many people I've tried to study the idea of the Antichrist with, and they won't even listen to you, mm -hmm. because they say, no, you can't, you can't know who the Antichrist is. That's in the future. There's no way you could know. I say, but if I give you a list of characteristics in the Bible, it's right here. I, no, 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 I don't want to hear it. And so it's done exactly what Rome wants it to do. Mm -hmm. It's made Protestants forget our Protestant teaching of who the Antichrist is. Mm -hmm. That's a key idea. Now, mm -hmm. there's another reason 
What is the other danger in believing this secret rapture deception? Think about the way this plays out. If you are a good Christian, according to this theory, when the secret rapture happens, you will disappear. If you're not so good of a Christian, then you will see a time of tribulation happening. Well, you'll see all the people disappearing, and you'll say, oh, I better get my act together because I wasn't good enough to go on the first trip. And you'll have an additional <laughs> few years. Yeah. It'll be tribulation. It won't be that fun, but you got a second chance, right? That's very dangerous. Mm -hmm. Because according to the Bible, Jesus says when he comes, he will reward every man according to his works shall be. Yeah. That's it. So if the devil tells you, hey, you know, if you, get, if you go on the first trip, that's great. You must have been a really good Christian. But if you don't, then get your act together after you got another chance. What he's telling, what he's doing is he's, he's getting this idea of people thinking that eh, you got another shot. Don't worry about it too much. Don't worry about, the, 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 about this being the end. Because according to Jesus, when he comes, it's over. Question. So is that the teaching that if you don't go in the rapture and you stay behind, if you don't take the mark, then you'll make it? Is that exactly? Okay. You just have to go through some hard times. But as long as you don't take don't the mark, take the mark, mark don't let the tattoo okay. get in your forehead or whatever they say, right? And then you'll be good. But it'll it'll be hard. But yeah. but it'll be good. Yeah. And so the idea is you get another chance. But according to the Bible, that's it. So that's dangerous. Go ahead. Um, I'm sorry, but this is what I've learned. This is the true things that I've learned from the church where I came from. Mm -hmm. But where did they get these teachings? Or don't they even study deeper to mm -hmm. understand mm -hmm. what it is in the Bible? Mm -hmm. Since they are reading the Bible and yeah. studying it in theological school. Yeah, you know, you would you would yeah. think, right? Yes. But here's the thing, you gotta look yeah. at the, the high priests yes. in Jesus' yes. day, right? Mm -hmm. The high priests were the ones who who uh, officiated <clears throat> over his trial and execution. The high priest. These men knew their Bible. Paul was a Pharisee, right? These men had large sections of the Old Testament memorized. But, if it's not something that you want to believe, it's you lie to yourself, and you just ignore the parts you don't want to see, and you see the parts you want to see. Men are very, very good at lying to themselves. And so, yeah, there are scholars who have spent their, their whole lives studying mm -hmm. and are completely no. just as deceived as, well, and it doesn't necessarily mean they're lost, but lost is in the concept yeah. of uh, misunderstanding. Yes. Completely deceived on this subject. You can be you can be saved and be misunderstanding. Yeah. Go ahead. I saw in a, you know when I studied the Bible, I always like I asked the Holy Spirit to teach me and and uh, help me to understand, even if I don't like what I what I hear. What I Absolutely. Hear, I had to. Okay, what it says. It you hurts, know, it hurts me, but. <laughs> yeah. I have to accept the truth on the Bible, yeah. the Bible says. Absolutely. You know, one of the, they call logical fallacies, right? There's different, um, there's different ideas of, of logical fallacies when you, when you debate, um, um, and things that are, that are, you know, bad ideas to prove a theory. And one of them is an appeal to authority, right? That, well, the rulers believe this. Therefore, it must be true. That is one of the chief theories behind Roman Catholicism, is that the priests know better. Right? Mm -hmm. The learned men, the scholars, they all know better. But that is one of the reasons why the Jews in Jesus' day rejected him. Look at John chapter 7, verse 48. Now, uh, 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 I saw your, your hand. I'll ask you just a second. John chapter 7, verse 48. Look at this. John chapter 7, verse 48. Here's the question asked. Have any of the rulers or the Pharisees believed him? You see that? Mm -hmm. So they said, look, the leaders 
don't believe this is the Messiah. The rulers and the Pharisees don't believe it. Therefore, he can't be the Messiah. So instead of studying it for themselves, they took the word of, the, of their religious leaders. Yeah. And because of that, many people rejected Christ. And I think the same thing is happening today, is that people say, yeah, all these... And that's the, that's the idea of Roman Catholicism, is, is the priest knows better, we'll tell you what to believe. We'll tell you what the Bible says. God wants us to know it for ourselves. Amen. You had your hand up? Yes. Yes. Uh, I, I, I just um, I want to say that um, it doesn't matter if we go to, um, to these times, because uh, in life we some, um, many times go through a hard situation. Mm -hmm. So I think we don't have to worry. Uh, Amen. About it, but in our behaviors. Amen. Amen. I it's agree. True. I agree. Mm -hmm. Just like Peter says, we should. If all these things are going to burn up, then we should be living a whole in holy conduct, but not worry about uh, leave the rest in God's hands. He'll Amen. Take care of us. Amen. Absolutely. Amen. Amen. So, Amen. hopefully, that makes sense. Yes. You know, Go another ahead. point, you know, this is very work, you know, John 8, you know, yeah. they answered then, the Pharisees, they answered to the soldiers and said, officers, said, are you also deceived? It's incredible. They are the ones that are deceived. Yeah. This is the reverse. Yeah. Yeah. They were not deceived because they said, never men spoke like this man. And they said, oh, you're deceived, right? Yeah. And the religious leaders mm -hmm. are. We're, we're, we're tricked at that point. So we shouldn't be surprised. Uh, just look at the history of the Old Testament and how often was it that the majority of God's people were right on almost any subject, right? I mean, we're humans. And so you, it's a history of Israel just, oh man, they were tricked about this, tricked about that, tricked about that, right? So we shouldn't be surprised if the multitudes say one thing, right? right? Jesus says, broad is the way, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's almost by definition, if you see a teaching that's popular, yes. it's probably wrong. It's not right. You know, if the great men and the, the leaders and the scholars all say something, gosh, most of, I hate to say it, but most of the time they're, that they're wrong. Um, all you got to do, I mean, you're going to believe your own eyes or you're going to believe what some man showed you, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. these verses are too clear. They're just too clear, you know, and I'm happy, like I said, to look at their own verses, and all you got to do is read them in context, and it's obvious. Why don't people believe it? It's not popular, you know? Yeah. That's why the Catholic Church did what they did, is because they wanted to appeal to the public. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's not something that people want to hear. Yeah. yeah. It's not popular, it's, you know, for all these various reasons, mm -hmm. you know? The idea that the Antichrist, because if you reject this idea, you're rejecting futurism, and the idea that the Antichrist is the papacy, that's not politically correct to say anymore. Mm -hmm. you can, if you say that in a seminary, you know, today, you're looked as not only being old-fashioned and kind of outdated, and that's old, fuddy-duddy stuff, uh, you know, the Pope's the Antichrist, but it's, oh, that's rude, and, and, and it's not politically correct, you know? And so there's reasons why people, uh, there's, there's pressure on people to believe a certain way. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, this is what I see, is that I see that it's, to the, to the Christian communities, it's like we're afraid to call them out. Yep, yep. We're yep. afraid to make a stand. Yep. On what they believe and in, in this fallacy that they're that they're spreading, yes. we don't want to cause or to make waves. Yes. Yeah, let's not upset. Let's them. not upset yes. the apple cart here. Yes. Let's not upset them. Men will tell you not even to study prophecy. Who was it? I believe it was yeah. Rick Warren in one of his books, and he says that we shouldn't even be studying prophecy. Basically, just, uh, God doesn't want you to worry about that. And it's just. People don't, let's not upset the apple cart. Right? But what I was kind of thinking of that as far as call, calling out oh, the yeah. Catholic Church. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, that's very not popular today. Don't, don't go there. Don't go there. Very don't not go popular. There. You want to, uh, you know, you know there's and that, some that, seminaries. Ups, that upsets me. I mean, there's I, some I, I, that really annoys me. <laughs> there's some seminaries where you can get kicked out. Yeah. Oh, you know, yes. of, 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 a, of, of a, you know, you want to get your theology degree to be a pastor, you can get kicked out. For, for if you're consistently trying to share this, I don't want to hear that. Or being biblical. Huh? 
Yeah. And that's just kind of like about going back to where you were teaching a few weeks ago back about Catholicism, the Popacy, wants to get that world under united, yeah, world under religion. one yeah. basic rule, under, one, absolutely. under their authority. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, well, do I see your hand up Yeah, there? I found out what, uh, uh, from a personal experience, when I first started reading the Bible, I didn't know what church to go to. Uh -huh. So I thought, you know, the popular church of the, you know, Catholic church would be a good one. Mm -hmm. So that's why I went to the Compass. Yeah, I don't, I don't know any better. Yeah, know, just so. going wherever it's close. Yeah. I did the same. I did the same. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Well, where else for the enemy to work? Within in the church. Then within the church. Amen. Within <laughs> God's people. That's yeah. just like Abs the right ground. Absolutely. You know, he, doesn't, you, yeah. he doesn't waste his time on those who are lost. That's I'm right. Amen. He spends all his energy, his energy on the Christians. Yeah. That's right. Yep. Absolutely. And it says, you know, Satan will come as an angel of light. He's at for a church. Ministers yeah. come as ministers of righteousness. Yeah. 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 And we yeah. have to be so knowledgeable about it that we can recognize. Study to show thyself approved. Right. Exactly. One other question. Please forgive me if, no, I, if I missed somewhere. Okay. But where's the white throne judgment? So, um, there's a couple, well, there's a couple different ideas of judgment. There's one in Daniel 7, and there's one in Revelation 20, uh -huh. right? And the idea of, uh, yeah, so we will look at that when we look at the millennium. It's in okay. Revelation chapter 20. That's a good question. Yeah. Okay. And we'll, we'll look at that very clearly, because there's, there's two different groups that need to be judged. Think of it this way. We, we talked about this a little bit. When he comes, his reward will be with him. With him. Right? So the righteous get their reward at the second coming. So that means they must have been judged beforehand. The wicked, although they get their reward at the second coming, they're also raised from the dead again. Remember, there's this second resurrection? Second death. And then they get the second death. So they're raised and then they die again, right? So in between the second coming and this second resurrection, they are judged. And Paul tells us that he says, do you not know that we shall judge the world? And that the we will judge even That's fallen right. angels, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 So the judgment of the wicked mm -hmm. must happen before they get their final punishment, which is the second death. Mm -hmm. So that, that's basically, in a nutshell, how the, the idea so the wicked need coming. to be judged before oh. they get their final punishment. But we'll Thank we'll you. look at that when we look at Revelation twenty. Good question. Good question. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I want to keep you guys too late, so we should wrap it up. But good questions and good discussion. It sure was. Uh, mm -hmm. Hopefully, it was clear. Let's say a closing prayer. Somebody want to volunteer for us? Okay. Please.